Hello guys, assalamu alaikum. It's Full Metal Theist here, and I think this is gonna be quick. Bring it on. So, what are we doing today? We're doing a side quest. And what is a side quest? You know in video games, when instead of doing the main mission, you do the secondary mission? Oh, I see. So, what is the secondary mission about? Well, it's about one of the usual dumb arguments from David Wood. And here's what's gonna happen in this video. We are about to watch a video where David Wood makes a very silly argument. It goes like this, in a syllogistic form. Premise 1. Jesus loves everyone. And when I say everyone, David Wood means EVERYONE! Exactly. And then, on his premise 2, he says that Oh, Allah doesn't love certain people. He then finally comes to the conclusion from that that Jesus is better than Allah, and that therefore Allah is defective. In other words, that the Islamic conception of God is defective. Now, let's watch point by point and give him some <laughs> intellectual spanking. Oh my god, guys, I just thought that David Wood is part of the problem of evil. You know how some atheists sometimes complain that... <laughs> That there is unnecessary suffering in the world. <laughs> I think David Wood is, is I don't know, helping that cause. Like I'm subjecting myself and you to this unnecessary suffering. Anyway, whatever. Let's do it. Because our Muslim friend asked about the love of Jesus, and I will answer. Let's read a few verses from Matthew five, Dawah for Christian. Matthew five verses forty three to forty eight. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brothers... What more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore you are to be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Notice, Dawah for Christian, Jesus commands his followers to love our enemies, even those who persecute us, so that we can be like God in this sense. God has shown love even towards our enemies, we should too. Notice also that Jesus looks down upon the sword of love that says, Love me first, and I'll love you back. If you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Tax collectors were among the people most despised by the Jews. They were viewed as traitors because they collected taxes from their own people to give to the Romans, and they would collect a little extra for themselves. Jesus says that even tax collectors love people who love them. Why is this important? All right, guys. Do you know when someone is telling you a story, but they just keep hiding parts of truth from you? Well, that's a logical fallacy. It's called suppressed evidence. And this is being committed by David Wood. Why is that? Because the Bible actually says that God hates some people. If you go to Roman 9 verse 13, it says that God hated a certain Isaiu before he was even born for some sort of mysterious decision. Again, in Psalms 5, verse 5, it says that your all-loving Jesus hates the arrogant and that he doesn't stand their presence, you know, and that we should join him in hating those who do wrong. In Psalms 139, verse 21 to 22, he says something again um, along these lines. He says, I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them as my enemies. And the New Testament in Revelation 2, verse 6, says something along these lines once again. So, 
Hold up, Mr. David Wood. And from another perspective, there is quite a, of a problematic philosophical consequence here. Uh, imagine, we are usually told, you know, even in the Christian tradition, hate the sinners, but, uh, I'm sorry, hate the sin, but love the sinners. Okay? Do you know what happens to the sinners? They go to hell. It's not the sin who goes to hell. Those who do not accept your all-loving, beautiful, sunshine, rainbow, Jesus Christ, those who do not accept him as their Lord and Savior, those who are his enemies, they go to hell, okay? And you know who sends them to hell? The one you believe he loves them the most. Oh, yes, your good, loving Lord Jesus, he loves them so bad that he makes them burn in hell for a tremendously long time. Oh, but David Wood says, no, love your enemy. This is what Jesus says. Sure, he loves you so much that he burns you into hell. Oh, David Wood, your gibberish arguments and your lack of, I don't know. Do you ever sit down and think this stuff before you speak it? Anyway, let's go on the second part. Why is this important for you to know, Dawa for Christian? Well, what kind of love does Allah have? In Surah 3, verses 31 to 32, Allah tells Muhammad to say, If you love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you your faults, and Allah is forgiving, merciful. Say, Obey Allah and the Apostle, but if they turn back, then surely Allah does not love the unbelievers. So, if you love Allah, then follow Muhammad, and Allah will love you. But if you don't, then Allah will not love you. In other words, if you love Allah first, and you obey Him, then Allah will decide to love you back. But this is the kind of love that, according to Jesus, is no better than the love of a random tax collector. So, as we have seen on our comments to his first premise, it's safe to say at this point that, according to David Wood, the love of Jesus, that, according to Jesus, is no better than the love of a random tax collector. Because your very same Bible says that your all-loving God, Jesus, does indeed hate or doesn't favor certain people. And this is what happens when you merge a gibberish argument with a very poor thinker. They end up self-refuting. Secondly, in regards to Allah's love, there is a slight difference between the schools of Aqidah. Ashari's, for example, consider the attribute of love in regards to God as related to God's will and intention. So God can will to be benevolent to certain people, and that would be his love. Others, like Ibn Taymiyyah, would affirm love as a divine attribute on its own. And on this line of belief, just because God is loving does not mean that he loves everything. It wouldn't be very loving of God to look at someone abusing a child and say, well, I'm not really that bothered. You have my love and affection. So there are some things that God doesn't love that, in fact, he hates. So he doesn't love murder or abuse or selfishness, pride. Actually, if he is loving, then he will hate these things. But David Wood, he's just, um, you know, a joke. There is no seriousness. There is no intellectual uh, validity to, to the gibberish arguments he, he comes up with. So. What this means is that, according to Jesus, the God of the Bible is greater than the God of the Quran. According to Jesus, the God of the Bible is perfect in love. The God of the Quran is limited in love and therefore defective. You follow a defective God, Dawah for Christian. Oh, hell no! So up to this point in the video, you should know. What is that you should know? You should know why, actually, 
he is calling his very same biblical conception of God as defective. Not only Allah, but his loving God Jesus, according to his logic, is defective. And if you don't know why, then rewind the video and start again because you missed something. That said, the only defective thing here is actually his critical thinking. He's just doing bad philosophy. First of all, he'd have to define his standard for divine perfection and have us agree on that, okay? As when it comes to the perfection of God, uh, this thesis, meaning that God is perfect, can be logically supported by different models, such as the radial model, something called like that, according to which God is the being than which no greater is metaphysically possible by virtue of him occupying the top, the top link in all local chains of being. So, he can brag about Allah being defective all he wants. It's just a castle in the air made of bad philosophy. Some people, some people, not being appropriate recipients of God's love due to their very own actions, take away nothing from God's perfection and power. He is still the being than which no greater is metaphysically possible. In few words, Allahu Akbar. On the other hand, not only he is self-refuting, but the conception of divine love he believes in is absurd as it takes us to believe in absurd conclusions. I mean, think about it. You are the enemy of Jesus. You don't accept him as your Lord and Savior, and he loves you. He loves you so bad. He's got so much affection for you that your destiny, your end, is hellfire. Okay? And as you burn in hell for eternity, or for a very long time, a tremendously long time, if you don't believe in the eternity of hellfire as a Christian, well, as you burn, he loves you so much. And enough with David Wood's nonsense. Anyway, I made this video actually for a reason. David Wood, I don't care about him. Uh, um, I just want to update you. I've been working on Hinduism recently, but due to some personal issues, it's taking me longer than expected. Inshallah, I apologize for that. And just be patient and there shall come more content in the future, God willing. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.